Okay guys, I wish I could say it was a great day in the bluegrass, but to be honest with you, it's just not, okay? It's, it's wet, it's gray, and uh, it makes me feel very Kurt Cobainish. This is a reason I live in the bluegrass state, not Seattle, okay? But I'm gonna do my best. I got my Stanley thermos full of this gourmet coffee. Let me get me a swig. Mmm. And I'm gonna work through this weather because that's what a top-notch dog trainer does. He doesn't let the weather bother him. He gets to going and he goes and goes and goes and he never gives up. So, we're gonna train some dogs. First, we're gonna pick back up on Karen Pryor's book, Don't Shoot the Dog. Remember why mine looks this way. Yours needs to start looking this way. Okay, we're gonna jump right over here to page 54 and we're gonna pick up on the last half of what Karen Pryor considers her 10 laws of shaping. Now, I know, I know they're not really laws, okay? But these are suggestions and they bear uh, a little scrutiny. All right, so we got to five last time, so let's jump right on to six. It says, don't change trainers in midstream. You can have several trainers per trainee, but stick to one shaper per behavior. Okay, now, what that means for me, because I run this professional dog kennel, and you know, it's me, I got my lovely assistant from Florida, I got my two sons, and I got a myriad of people coming and going every day. So there's a lot of training going on. There's a lot of training from people towards dogs, and to be honest with you, these dogs really do, you know, they do a masterful job of manipulating these new people that come. So there's all kinds of stuff going both ways. But what Karen is talking about right here is when you're, when you're working on a, you know, a behavior that's very specific or a behavior chain that's very specific, it's a good idea to let your dog master that behavior with one trainer because there's always small differences in how people do things. Now, this isn't for your just everyday obedience around the house stuff, but it's for, you know, like competition style healing or set in motion or down in motion or, 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 or inductive retrieves, things like that. So, when you're working with a dog, try to leave the real complex stuff for one trainer and one dog until they get that mastered. Then you can kind of start uh, generalizing that to, to a lot of different handlers, you know. Okay, now number seven. If one shape and procedure is not a listened in progress, find another. There are as many ways to get behavior as there are trainers to think them up. All right, well listen. This right here is, uh, this, we run into this all the time. You know, somebody reads a book or they get on the internet or they talk about what their neighbor did or what they did with their other dog. And so they start to think about dog training as this real rigid uh, set of procedures. You know, it's like a formula. And a lot of dog trainers are very formulaic. You know, they try to plug a dog into a formula, and then if that formula doesn't, if the dog doesn't fit the formula, they say, well, the dog, you know, it's, it's not doing well. When in reality, you need to be real, real creative when you're trying to get behaviors, you know? So if something's not working, you know, just try something else. You know, old guy I used to work for, he'd say, son, if you try something new every day, even if you don't get something right, you at least know what didn't work. And so you end up with that big list of things that didn't work, which automatically makes the list that, that, that does work, you know, it, it, it makes it more understandable. Okay, number eight, don't interrupt a training session gratuitously. That constitutes a punishment. Okay, so if you're working with the dog, you know, you want to you wanna make sure that you've allotted enough time and enough mental energy to get through that training session. You know, don't get frustrated, don't get bored, don't, you know, don't get on your cell phone and just walk away from the, walk away from, from the activity. Because the dog, you guys don't realize this, you know, people think that those dogs are just sitting around waiting to do things for you. And that, that's just not true. You know, the dog, he's got a vested interest in learning these behaviors. And you owe it to him to give him an honest effort. If you're asking for an honest effort from your dog, well, then you owe that dog an honest effort back. And so if I'm going to dedicate between 9 and 9.30 to work on a behavior chain, I'm giving him that time. You owe it to him. So never expect more from the dog than what you're willing to give back. Okay, that's only fair. Number nine, if behavior deteriorates, go back to kindergarten. Quickly review the whole shaping progress process with a series of easy reinforcements. Okay, now listen. Sometimes there's stuff on a dog's mind. Sometimes there's stuff on your mind. Sometimes it's just bad Kurt Cobain weather. It's driving you crazy and you can't concentrate, okay? There's a lot of reasons that you don't, you don't do things perfectly. With the dog, sometimes it's just environmental, you know, environmental stuff. 
sometimes it's that you've accidentally you know took a little divergent path in your training that you didn't mean to so if you're having trouble just go back a couple of training sessions make it easy remind the dog hey you've already been down this path you know how to do this you can do it it's real easy give them some easy wins get their confidence back up and then you'll be right back on the track to, to accomplishing your ultimate goal when it comes to that particular behavior or behavior chain number 10 end each each session on a high note if possible but in any case quit while you're ahead uh, listen <laughs> what we see more than anything else well probably the first thing that we see the most of is people are just lazy and uh, they don't work with their dogs like they should and they don't exercise their dogs like they should lovely assistant what's the most important thing in dog training exercise exercise listen all these books all these techniques all these they don't mean anything if you're not exercising your dog properly okay so let's that's just a side note you got to exercise you got to spend the time with them but a very common mistake that we see is people, they'll get a dog to doing something and man, they will wear it out. They will drag it in the ground. If I see my lovely assistant get a dog to roll over, I know that poor dog's going to have the hide rubbed off its skeleton by the end of the week because she's going to have that dog rolling over everything, rolling up the hill, rolling down the hill, rolling in the barn, you know, you name it because she, she's like a dog on a bone with a new behavior. So I got to come out there and say, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute wait a minute okay so this is what I say personally to a dog once they get a behavior I say this listen if you'll do that behavior when I ask you to do it if you'll do it promptly and you'll do it correctly I promise I won't ask you to do it too much okay so make that deal with your dog tell them say listen if you'll do things promptly if you'll do them correctly soon as I ask you know then I won't be bossing you all day because nobody likes to be bossed all day long for someone else's amusement and a lot of dog training gets boiled, bo really boils down to, you know, you're getting that dog to do stuff because your friend came over, because your grandmom came over, because you want to make a YouTube video, you know? Okay? So, so like I said, you make a good deal with that dog. Don't make them do stuff too much, especially, especially when they're young. You know, I see people wear that out all the time. Okay, now we're going to move over here today back to... Back to my little process of training some Malinois puppies uh, using traditional methods. So follow me over here to the training table and we'll get started doing some healing, some figure eight training, and some sit and stays with just an old slip lead and a rag. And I'm going to show you there's a lot of ways to skin these cats. See you later. <laughs>